In this video, we're going to take a look at the product rule. So let's just say I have a curve here, y equals, and let's just say I can express this now as a product of two functions. So f of x multiplied by g of x. So to differentiate something like this, to get dy by dx, we need to use the product rule. So the product rule is given here as f of x multiplied by g prime of x. So f of x multiplied by g prime of x. And then we add that it's now going to be g of x multiplied by f prime of x. So g of x multiplied by f prime of x. Okay. Now a slightly quicker way of giving this result here is if I say y is equal to uv, where u and v are my two functions here, then dy by dx, so the derivative here of y with respect to x, is given as uv prime, so the u here multiplied by the derivative of v plus v u prime. Okay. So that's a slightly quicker way of giving it. These are equivalent, just a slightly different way um, of writing that. So what we're going to do now is take a look at a few practice questions here using the product rule. So if we take a look at the first question here, we've been given that y is equal to 2x cubed multiplied by x minus 1 to the power of 4, and we're asked to find dy by dx. So what I need to do here is define my two functions. We've got u and we have v. Now remember, it doesn't matter what we define as u and v here, the order doesn't matter. So I'm just going to say that u is 2x cubed and v in that case then will be the remaining function, which is x minus 1 to the power of 4. So what I need to do here now is also find u prime and v prime. I'm going to differentiate u here with respect to x and do the same with v. So u prime here, just differentiate 2x cubed with respect to x. In that case, that would be 6x squared. Hopefully nice and straightforward. Or x minus 1 here to the power of 4. This will be a simple application of the chain rule. So that's going to be four lots of x minus one to the power of three. Okay. So we've got u, we've got u prime, we also have v and v prime. So we've got everything we need now to find um, dy by dx here using the product rule. So dy by dx here using the product rule. So that's going to be u multiplied by v prime. So u v prime. And then we do v multiplied by u prime. So in this case now, u v prime, that's going to be 2x cubed multiplied by 4 multiplied by x minus 1 to the power of 3. So in this case now, what I can do is 2 times 4, that would be 8. I'm going to get 8x cubed multiplied by x minus 1 to the power of 3. We get 8x cubed multiplied by x minus 1 to the power of 3. And then we've also got v here multiplied by u prime, so x minus 1 to the power of 4 multiplied by 6x squared. And in that case, what I'm going to get then is 6x squared multiplied by x minus 1 to the power of 4. And there we have it. So you could do further work here on factorizing. Um, you could factor out here, for example. But I'm just going to leave my solution there as it is here. We're not asked to express it in a certain form, but that would be our solution there to question 1. Moving on to question 2 now, we're being given that y is equal to e to the 4x multiplied by sine 2x. And we're asked to find the value of dy by dx at the point where x equals 0. Because we have a product of functions here, we need to use the product rule. So I define my first function u as being e to the 4x. So e to the 4x, and my other function here, v, will be sine 2x. So to use the product rule here, we also need u prime and v prime. So I differentiate e to the 4x with respect to x, that would give me 4e to the 4x. If I differentiate sine 2x here with respect to x, again this will just be a simple application now of the chain rule, and that will give me 2 cos 2x. Okay. So let's just remind ourselves here of the formula for the product rule. So dy by dx is given as u multiplied by v prime, so u v prime, and then we add v multiplied by u prime, so v u prime there. So u multiplied by v prime, that's going to be e to the 4x multiplied by 2 cos 2x. In that case, we're going to get 2e to the 4x cos 
2x. And then we've got v u prime, so that's sine 2x multiplied by 4e to the 4x. So plus 4e to the 4x sine 2x. So what I'm going to do now, you don't have to do, but I think it makes um, further calculations a little bit more um, easier to work with. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor this 2e to the 4x out. Well, 2e to the 4x. Inside the bracket, then I'm going to get cos 2x. And we're also going to get 2 sine 2x. Now what we're concerned about here is the value of dy by dx at the point where x equals 0. So, an x equals 0, what's the value of dy by dx? All I need to do here then is substitute 0 into this expression here. But do remember, because we're differentiating trigonometric functions, we're now working in radians. So I'm going to get 2e to the 4 times 0. So that's going to be 2e to the power of 0. I've then got cosine here of 2x, so the argument of this function is 2x. So that can be 2 times 0, which is 0. That gives me cosine 0. Then I've got 2 sine 2x, so again, that's going to be 2 times 0, giving me 0. So I get 2 sine 0. So remember, cosine of 0 in radians is going to be 1. Sine 0 will be 0. So in that case then, 2. Um, multiplied by e to the 0 here, so that's the same as 2 times 1, giving me 2. We've then got cosine of 0, which is going to be 1, plus 2 sine 0, which is going to be 0. So in other words, I've got 2 times 1, giving me 2 there. So the value of dy by dx at the point where x equals 0 is 2, giving us a solution to question 2. So if we take a look at the very last question here to finish with, we've got the curve C, which has this equation here. We've also got a diagram which shows a sketch of the curve C. Now we're told that the point P here lies on the curve, and we can see that here in the diagram, and it has x coordinate of positive 2. So let's just note that here. Now we're asked to find an equation of the tangent to the curve C at the point P. So the very first thing I'm going to do here is find the y coordinate for the point P. So we know that y is equal to 2x multiplied by the square root of x plus 2. So in that case, if we know what x is equal to, in this case x equals 2, all I need to do here is substitute that into the right hand side and we'll get the value of y. So in that case, we're going to do 2 multiplied by 2, so that's 4. And then we multiply that here by the square root of x plus 2, so that's 2 plus 2, giving me the square root of 4. So 4 multiplied by the square root of 4 is the same as 4 multiplied by 2, and that will give us 8 there. So the y coordinate here for the point P is positive 8. So that's the very first thing we should do here. The next thing I'm going to do here now is find the gradient at this point here, P. So to find the gradient at this point here, P, we need to find dy by dx. Now, for y here, this can be expressed as a product of two functions, or it is expressed as a product of two functions. So in that case, to find dy by dx, we need to use the product rule. So u here will be my first function, which will be 2x. v then will be the remaining function, which will be the square root of x plus 2. But I can also express that as x plus 2 to the power of a half. x plus 2 to the power of a half. What we also need here is u prime and v prime. So u prime here is a derivative of 2x with respect to x, so in that case that would give us 2, nice and easy. And then for v prime here, we need to use the chain rule. So in this case, I'm going to get a half, and then we multiply that by x plus 2 to the power of minus a half. So x plus 2 to the power of minus a half. And what I can do then is I can actually express this here as 1 over 2 lots the square root of x plus 2. Okay, so let's just try and do that denominator line a little bit better, or the fraction line a little bit better here. So 1 over 2 lots of the square root of x plus 2. Now the reason I'm expressing it like this is because it makes life a little bit easier when we go on to find the value of the gradient in a moment. So like we said, to find dy by dx here, we need to use the product rule. 
of dy by dx. So to find dy by dx here, using the product rule, it's going to be u multiplied by v prime. And then we do v multiplied by u prime. Okay, so putting all that together then, I've got u, which is 2x, and I multiply that by v prime, which is 1 over 2 lots to the square root of x plus 2. So I'm going to get 2x all over 2 lots of the square root of x plus 2. And I've got v u prime, so that's 2 lots of the square root of x plus 2. Plus 2 lots of the square root of x plus 2. Okay. Now I can simplify a little bit here and cancel the 2 out here and here. So what I'm going to get then is x over the square root of x plus 2 plus 2 lots of the square root of x plus 2. Okay. Now we need the value of the gradient at this point here, p. So in that case, that would be when x equals 2. When x equals 2, dy by dx then. dy by dx will be equal to 2 over the square root of 2 plus 2. So that's the square root of 4. I'm going to get 2 over 2 there. And I've got 2 lots of the square root of 2 plus 2. So that's 2 lots of the square root of 4. 2 lots of the square root of 4. And if we evaluate this here, 2 over 2 is 1. 2 multiplied by the square root of 4, so the square root of 4 is obviously 2. So 2 times 2 is 4. So I've got 1 plus 4 giving me 5 there. Okay. And that's what we'd expect, right? We'd expect a positive gradient here. Obviously, if I've got a negative gradient, then I want to double check that. So that's the value of the gradient. So in that case, now we've got the gradient here. We've got the point that it passes through. So in that case, now we just need to use. So we use y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. Okay. So x1 and y1 here, that'll be x1 and that will be y1. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just clear a bit of room here just so we can finish this question here. Let's get rid of this top bit here. Hopefully you've made a note of this. Let's just get rid of all of this here. Rid of that. Go to this line here. We should have enough room now to finish this here. So in that case, then we just need to use y minus y1 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. And as well, m here is the gradient which we've just calculated to be 5. So in that case, then it's going to be y minus y1 plus y minus 8 is equal to m multiplied by x minus x1. So m here is 5. That's 5 lots of x minus x1, which is 2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to expand. So I'm going to get y minus 8 is equal to 5x minus 10. So 5 times minus 2, minus 10. And then if I put this in the form here, y equals mx plus c, just add 8 to both sides then. So therefore, what we get here is y equals 5x minus 2. So minus 10 plus 8 gives us minus 2 there. Okay. And there we have it. So that's an equation of the tangent to the curve C there at the point P. Obviously you could express this in a few different ways, but something that is equivalent to this. Okay. So that's our solution there to the very last question. And that brings us to the end of this video on the product rule. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at the quotient rule.